No, pubs. nobody cares about sustainability for me. Yeah? People yeah. just drink and get drunk. <laughs> They seem to have be having a conversation about Red Stripe. They're talking about the high IBU levels of Red Stripe, I think. Crisp, yeah. What what mix up a beer? Alcohol and water. Hops. <laughs> Barley. I'm just sorry, I'm just pulling these off the top of my head. Uh, how many beers have you had today? This is my first one, mate. Are you aware, you know, how sustainable beer is? I don't care, to be honest. Do you drink beer? Yes, I do. Sam? Denny? Hi. Hello. Uh, you, you? you are beer drinkers, right? Beer drinkers, beer drinkers yeah. Uh, beer drinkers. <laughs> I wonder which beer you're drinking. I do like me real ale, but some of these guys have dragged me around mm. trying to find proper German <laughs> lager. <laughs> and that's where we are at the minute. I mean, we're actually making a point this year at IMBC of not air freighting any beer which we have done previously and you know we're talking about sustainability and we're not we're not coming from a point of view of saying like oh aren't we amazing we're not doing this because you know we we have air freighted beer before but we wanted to make a statement this year about sustainability and saying actually it's it's there's a twofold benefit of saying well actually we're not going to do that because it's not you know it does ha increase the carbon footprint of the beer that you're bringing over but also, it's a statement about where the UK brewing scene is now. That, like, the quality of the beer that's being produced in this country, and in fact, just down the road from us, like, we're surrounded by incredible world-class breweries. Why, 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 why are we not shouting about them from the rooftops instead of making it about these kind of international breweries? Hiya, Paul. A uh, conversation that I remember having with you was when you gave me a lift in your hybrid car. Yeah. And um, it must have been like four or five years ago, and we were talking about the issues of fuel. This summer we've maybe seen, well, since March, I guess, we've seen the issue crop up, and, um, and it has become a, quite a prevalent issue in beer. We've been going around talking to people about sustainability. It's quite difficult to breach the subject of sustainability when we've, we're already neck deep in shit. How are we doing? You know, fundamentally, I think brewing is a really, really energy intensive industry. Uh, we take many parts water to output a single part beer. You know, we use loads of gas, electricity. So of course, sustainability really matters to us as brewers. We use a lot of energy to provide people with all the drinks and experiences that they love. And, you know, over time, of course, We'd love to see technologies scale down to meet craft brewers at the production uh, sizes that they're at. A lot of technology exists that's made for the really big guys and we are starting to see some of that come down. But, you know, fundamentally, I think we're in a good place because we really care. Like craft beer as an industry really cares about playing a meaningful and positive part in people's lives. And of course, that means taking on their concerns and joining them with our concerns about what it means to be sustainable, what it means to be environmentally responsible so you know i think we're starting from a good place of care and concern and the big questions are like what next and how do we do things at our scale to make an impact for dave for example it's nice to see that they on their cans at least some of them they've got the the wee sticker that says how much the scan the uh what would you call it yeah 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 you can scan and see how much uh co2 per can which is nice um one of the really important things i think is just ongoing uh, reporting, um, calculating sort of monthly emissions, yearly reports. So one thing we've got coming up is we're looking at where maybe we can implement different energy saving tactics across the sort of brewery. We've sort of got we've got ongoing talks about looking at solar, looking at carbon capture as well. So having systems that directly capture carbon from the fermenting vessels, which are pretty cool. Um, so that'd help, yeah, cut down the CO2 that we're having to buy and then carbonate the beer with and obviously a, a big thing in regards to sustainability is material use like um and you know I, i've spoken to adam pierce from the sustainability material institute in manchester yeah so my name's adam pierce as he said i'm a industrial liaison officer at the sustainable materials innovation hub which is part of the henry royce institute for advanced materials at the University of Manchester. What are you guys doing in terms of responsible material use? Something that we're 
We're always focusing on using uh, the stainless steel kegs, keg star. Sort of the emission factor with those um, are so much lower than, than one-way kegs like plastic kegs. I think the emission factor for our keg star kegs is like 0.9 kilograms CO2e, um, whereas the one-ways are sort of 4.2, so it's, that's for the same sort of 30 litre size. So that's a big, big old difference. Uh, is there any consideration to making drink smaller again yeah I mean there's a lot of considerations there so actually in aluminium weight there's no difference between a 440 and a 330 uh, they use the same amount of aluminium so you could probably argue that 440s are more efficient I mean in terms of like customers having a better quality of life and accessing the exact package size that they want I think the really key thing to say here is like craft breweries in this country especially the size that we all started really we've only just started to get access to equipment that can be changed um, easily between one package format and another without us being really screwed over and having to do very intense and risky dial-ins each time. So I think that we probably will see breweries start to offer different can sizes, different formats. In the UK, domestically, we're really poor. Well, not poor hop growers, but we, we grow very little. And the, the import of hops is unavoidable, especially if we want a life beyond Fuggles, Goldings. Is, is sustainability a conversation that you have with your suppliers? Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, and it's something that they tell us about even before we ask. So all of the suppliers that we work with have their own um, sustainability goals. Um, and so we often find out what's coming down the line, what they're working on to make their plants more efficient and how they're stepping up. Uh, specifically with hops, I mean, you mentioned a few varietals there that are absolutely excellent in classic traditional British beer, but they're not particularly what customers want in modern pale ales, IPAs, double IPAs, and some of the kind of trendier um, styles that have really enabled craft beer to grow. So I think that the big challenge for us as brewers is we've developed this massive marketplace that continues to grow. It's very enthusiastic. It's very concerned about flavor impact. And now our job is to try and bring as many of those uh, British hop growers into that conversation, show them what's happening, help them get that same level of enthusiasm up and also work with them to resolve um, some of the supply or production constraints that they might have. I, th I think we're missing a bit of a trick here because the British hops are absolutely fantastic and they seem to be forgotten sometimes. Um, we very proudly use British hops in our bitter in our, um, and in our mild as well and in some of our lagers. And they are phenomenally good hops. They've been around for years. They've been they what you know, IPA was originally brewed with. Right, it would be great if people would sort of start using sort of more local hops, more local raw materials, and so get buying the hops from um, Herefordshire, Worcestershire, Kent. Now, they are phenomenally good hops. You know, it would be great if people use more of Hop imports, high IBUs, super bitter beer, danky, hop style. Importing hops is kind of un unavoidable. Uh, as a brewery um, which is very hop forward and based on sort of hazy perhaps New England styles with American, New Zealand, Aussie hops, uh, it's not really something we can get away from. Point on the English hops is interesting though. In the last few years um, we've seen some interesting things going on in the English hop market. But what, what we can do is, um, and we try to do, is work with our hop suppliers, question them on their sustainability as growers. Uh, ben, just this week, had a um, conversation with our main supplier, Yakima Chief Hops, and what they're doing around sustainability as a brewing industry, making it part of the conversation. It's the only way to improve things is to start talking about it. What about malts? Yeah, malts an interesting one. Um, because of how it's grown, lots and um, lots of pesticides are used to, to keep each um, each culture separate. We've had a look at using more sort of polyculture, um, mixed population malt, um, where it's all sort of grown together. So you've got oats, rye, barley, all together growing in the same the same field. A lot of the emissions come from the fertilizers that you use for those those fields. So we've looked at that with our mixed fermentation beers. Um, and it's something that we're looking at doing. Um, so coming up, we're going to do a, a beer that's more sort of sustainability focused. Um, so we're using local hops from, from Brookhouse Farms up in um, Herefordshire. And we're looking at using that heritage malt, um, that malt bill. So it's that nice combination 
no pesticides are used. It brings a little bit more of a challenge for the brewer, but it's, it's really good in terms of trying to reduce that carbon footprint of that beer. It's going to be called Evergreen Daydream, so have a, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for it. We're going to be donating 10% of the profits from that beer to sustainability causes, um, and we're also assessing that beer specifically for its carbon footprint to see how the processes that we're doing and the different um, raw ingredients that we're using are going to affect that, that carbon footprint. So hopefully we'll see a lower CO2e on that can, um, yeah, on the, on the back of the label. Paul, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to brew. This summer we've seen issues with water supply. Yeah. Water is a commodity that is at risk if these kind of extreme weathers that we've experienced this summer continues. Can we collect the rain from the cloud water for cloud water water <laughs> we have actually done a little bit of investigation into could we be using uh, captured rainwater and the answer is there is technology that could do that for us yeah. i think probably a bigger issue for us right now is um, the amount of water that it takes your average craft brewery like us uh, to make one liter of beer and how do we reduce water wastage mm -hmm. uh, so capture might come after we resolve some of those wastage issues yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely, that would be a cool thing to do, right? I mean, I'd love to see it passing, <laughs> passing the brewery, yeah. just this big water tower. Obviously, this year we've seen a bit of a drought. My nan has a little rainwater uh, tub yeah. in in her back garden that she waters her plants and stuff like that. Is rainwater a potential solution to future? Water usage. Water usage is definitely something uh, breweries should be looking at and something we're starting to look at ourselves. First thing for us when we started on our sustainability journey was to sort of have an open conversation and an open look at our brewery. Water usage uh, is something that this year uh, we've tried to use less water to make the same amount of beer. And in that we're, we're looking at using what would be wastewater or dirty water. Uh, the water that comes into the brewery we treat uh, before brewing with it that creates a, uh, a wastewater uh, so we're looking at using that through the CIP set so rather than going to the drain it gets used somewhere else before going to the drain and the CIP set also allows us um, to clean our packaging tanks and retain the CO2 in them uh, and we've seen in the first six months of running with it our CO2 usage per hectolitre of beer output reduced by 25 percent so i'm just just having an open look as a being company at where we are and being transparent yeah. yeah so as you said it's it's really tricky because in terms of the different scopes of emissions you have your scope one um that you're more indirect emission uh, your direct emissions sorry um as well as scope two scope three is normally the the vast majority of your business emissions and they're all like indirect a lot of that for us is is our malt our hops um and where they come from to make those like tropical beers that we do. A lot of that comes from America, New Zealand, that sort of thing. It's really hard to reduce those emissions. So yeah, as you said, mitigation is really important. Um, so we chose to do it through a peatland restoration scheme in Snowdonia in Wales. Um, so we're offsetting sort of 2,335 tons um, of CO2e, which is really cool. And that is, it's a really good project because we're looking at, peatland is a really important, I guess, ecosystem to supply the UK with clean drinking water, as well as being a really good carbon store. Um, as you said, we use a lot of water as a brewery, so it's really good to have that sort of link. And again, looking at our, our reporting each year, each month, Zavira is the company that we do that with, um, and they really help us to stay in touch with that number and work out when we next need to invest in our, in our next scheme, our next offsetting scheme to, help mitigate the rest of those emissions that we can't work on reducing. In 2014, there was, there was no other brewery in the country that didn't have a core range. Everyone was just making like a, a small variety of products and, a, and making a small number of seasonal releases or one-off releases a year. So we felt like there was a massive space for us to be very experimental and completely one-off led. And obviously in the seven years, seven and a half years since we started brewing, things have changed a lot. Especially after the past couple of years, mm. people did write to us a lot and say, look, we're really tired, we can't keep up. It's like we love the, the experimentation, but the constant sort of change is fatiguing. And, and when you bear in mind also like what's happening, what's coming up in terms of you know, the economy taking an absolute battering, um, I think it just made a lot of sense for us to say, you know what, this, these are a, a small set of products 
Uh, and really it's about us, you know, sort of expanding out of just that kind of very top end bracket into a, a bit more affordability um, below that. Are we going to see less double IPAs, quidders, tippers, de happers, happer dippers? I don't know how much more I could pay for a uh, a can of beer. Is that going to affect options moving forward? Uh, yeah, it's an interesting point and, um, and it's one that is a little worrying and something we've got a very keen eye on is the energy prices uh, and how that's going to affect our costs and how that's going to affect the costs we have to pass on to the consumer. We've already seen this year um, a, a sort of swing from the double IPAs stronger beers to more sessionable beers for us it's just sort of you know we, we know what our brewery is and what we're about hop forward drinkable beers new england soft bitterness and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stick stick to that and, and and just sort of move with consumer habits walking around today it's been amazing seeing the the harmony between that you've created in a way between the old and the new but can you tell us a bit about this site and your approach to continue to be able to use this site and it f being fit for purpose? It's a very good question actually because I've just put together a six year plan um, for investment on the brewery site to see us out for 200 years, it'll fit, fit us for the next 200. So the brewery itself was um, started in 1828 and where the offices are now is where the brewery was and then 1876 John Willie, who the brewery is named after, built the new brew house. And what we've done over the years is we've, the brewing process is still the same. We're still mashing in, we're still you know, boiling with the hops, we're still cooling it down, we're still fermenting. Um, but every time we, we, we change something or do it, we make it more efficient, try to make it more sustainable. We will just do everything we can do to maintain the integrity of the building, the history, but also to be able to create a, um, a modern brewery that's fit for purpose. Uh, so what have I learnt? Well I've learnt quite a lot actually. My sandals come off and what I've learnt is mainly I won't be wearing these sandals again for a shoot. Yeah I've learnt a lot. Uh, I, I don't think I really considered sustainability before this film. Well when I bought a can I didn't consider if the brewery was sustainable. I think we've seen that um, there's a lot, the conversation is very important now and then a lot of breweries are kind of taking note of this and understand that for their for the longevity of their tenure as a brewery that they need to start considering these issues now because we've clearly seen the impact this summer of how the climate may affect and make things difficult for us moving forward uh, there's some guys walking towards us so we'll hop to the next scene. Water. On the way here, we saw a reservoir. It was a third full. And it really does highlight what extreme weathers are doing to our water supply. Boy, have we had an extreme one this summer. Water is a major component in brewing beer. The amount of water wasted as a consequence is uh, huge. And I think solutions towards less water wastage and the ability to reuse water for cleaning, you know, rainwater, for example, should be considered. And um, Wales have only got a finite amount of water. You can't steal it all. Shit, there is loads of wasps here. Anyway, from wasps to hops. <laughs> we import the majority of our hops for the beer that we use, uh, that we make in the UK and it's kind of unavoidable uh, unfortunately uk hops aren't really sought after and they only constitute one you know, percent of the total world hop growth but i think what is really important here is maybe we see hops as a real luxury we cherish every time we get new world or american hops and that anybody who's importing hops tries to do it ethically make sure that the Hop growers are considering sustainability as an issue. Long may lovely, delicious imported hops continue, but we need to mitigate it somehow. Barley is another issue. North America has had its worst barley uh, harvest of all time, I think. 
one of the worst. It's not been any better in the UK. You know, barley is a waste product at the end of the day. When, you know, when it's spent, what do we do with it? Where does it go? Well, you know, we've seen examples of it being used as for cattle feed, which is great. I think that's a responsibility on our part to try and mitigate the issue of uh, climate change. And that's a whole big issue. Unfortunately, we're going to see a rise in the cost of our beer at the pumps because of all these issues with a good harvest, a good crop. You might have to pay a bit more for your beer for the sake of your brewery able to invest their money back into more sustainable practices. Our main focus is is always and will always be on UK breweries. I think like the beer industry is going to face a challenging time over the next like five to ten years. Yeah. There's huge pressures on breweries at the moment. Inflation, energy prices, sourcing ingredients, we've had water shortages, we've had all kinds of challenges that are going to make it increasingly difficult for breweries. It's sustainability even in the last few months has become a bigger question for us. You know, what, how, how do we make it sustainable for the planet? How do we make it sustainable for the breweries? And how do we keep that a sustainable price that, that, that customers can pay and that yeah. they want to pay? Um, so we're in quite a privileged position as a beer, beer festival because we're not brewers. So, you know, and we want to have a conversation really directly with the consumer and say, look, you know, how, do you, how can you help support your local brewery? A local beer drunk locally is better fundamentally for the environment. It's better for society. It's better for business. It's better in lots of different ways. So we wanted to kind of open up that conversation.